Thank you for joining us. We are here in the Toyota Green Room with the New York Times Modern Love column editor. His name is, what's your name? Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones. You sure? That's it? Yes. It's such a simple name. Modern Love has become a Sunday morning tradition of the New York Times style section since 2004, and most recently a podcast sensation, we'll talk about that too, who just marked its 100th episode. So since the first column was published back October 31st, 2004, there have been more than 670 columns and over 80,000 submissions. Welcome, Daniel Jones. Thank you. I am so glad you're here. I'm going to try not to drool over you while we're doing this, because I love this column so much. And I think I sit here as a single person, which, by the way, on the day before Valentine's Day, I sit here as a single person, and I so believe in the institution of love. And every time I read these columns, whether it ends successfully or it doesn't, mm -hmm. it just shows you that love's com love comes in many forms. So take us back to the beginning. What was the premise of the column when you guys started it? What, what, what did you want to do? Uh, well, the, the style editor at the time, a guy named Trip Gabriel, who went on to become a political reporter after the style section, um, he, he wanted to have personal stories uh, where there was enough of a, enough words, enough of a narrative arc where you could really tell a story and suck people in. Suck um, people in. Suck people in. Mission accomplished, yeah. yes. <laughs> And we didn't know what, um, what the parameters would be, but I, I came up with the name Modern Love from the David Bowie song. Um, oh. I thought that would make it broad enough to talk about, you know, style, the style section is about trends and what's happening now, so um, we wanted it to be contemporary. And uh, I wanted to interpret love as broadly as yeah. possible, which, yeah. you know, the, some of the most moving stories to me are about family bonds and, and parenthood and just those yes. those those blood bonds that um, often are more complicated than yeah it's not romance. always it's yeah. not always romantic love which I think is also no. very interesting and 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 I guess I sit here because I so love the idea of love and when I look at your columns I'm wondering even if it doesn't have a happy ending mm -hmm. there's always a moment in the story where you go ah you know that just sort of gets you yeah. right here is that the intention too to me, to me, a story is happy if it, it leads to greater understanding. Mm. You know, you can't really change. Tragic things are going to happen, yeah. you know, but that doesn't really make for a sad story. As long as you, a sad story for me is someone who doesn't know anything more at the end of the story than at the beginning. Uh -huh. You know, that's, that's sad. Yeah. <laughs> someone who, who learns, um, who can be useful to others, mm -hmm. who, who, can, who, who can understand something at a deeper level. Um, and, you know, I read so many of these, and I get bored so easily with the submissions that are oh. coming in that, that when someone really, really identifies something and talks about a problem in a new way, it just stands out. What is the process of selecting the story? Is it just you sitting at a desk and you're reading? I, I, I it's, very boring. it's very boring. I don't it's think me. it's boring at all. <laughs> it's me and a laptop or a desktop and just scrolling sort of blindly through um, And is it really just you alone doing it? It was me alone for the first 12 years. Uh, when we started the podcast, it, uh, more submissions started coming in. And I had an intern that I'd used when I'd done college contests who was really good. And um, so she, she now helps. Um, but it's primarily you, first. Daniel. It's all got to follow. It's primarily The you. only way to find the good material is to read everything. That's, that's the lesson. That is true. I, <laughs> I learned that I was asked to um, judge the Tribeca Film Festival, the short stories years ago, the short films years ago. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, well, you know, you can just look at the first five minutes. You don't have to look at the whole thing. But I think that does an injustice if you don't, because who knows? It could turn. So yeah. I sat there and looked at every single one, and at times it does become tedious. So I was wondering what that process is like for you. So what grabs you right away where you go, okay, we're on to something? Do you have to if, be if grabbed someone, by the first line? No. Okay. Um, but if someone, you can tell right away if someone is, um, is vulnerable on the page, if they're, if they're being honest and if they're, um, if they're grappling with something rather than trying to show off with words. Uh -huh. You can tell that difference really quickly. And there's a lot of the kind of show-offy, uh, stylistic voice kind of thing. But if someone has been through something that has been profoundly moving to them and has changed them, you, you can see that in the words. Mm -hmm. Whether they can pull that off in an essay that, that grows and, and, you know, that they really learn from, that's another matter. But... Um, 
but you can tell that voice. You can tell that right vulnerability away. pretty quickly. We're talking to Daniel Jones, who's the style editor of the New York Times uh, for the Modern Love, the, the, the editor for the Modern Love column in the New York Times. One of my favorite things about the Sunday paper. <laughs> so let's talk about first lines, because this grabbed me. Where does this stand for you in, in your definition? I had invited him over for only sex. So when I woke up the next morning, the sight of him putting on his pants, I said, do you need me to walk you out? I thought, <laughs> I want to finish that. And, th and this is, and the headline is, for the best hookup results, use your words. Okay? Question mark. Yeah. This is just is a, this 20, a vulnerable this is a, this person. This is a 24-year-old. Okay. Um, you know, the, the, way, uh, the way kids approach relationships has, has changed in ways. And um, this was one of these about... Uh, you know, wa sort of wandering into casual sex and having gender. it become more complicated. Yeah. And um, those stories can really can really resonate because just so many people are finding themselves in those situations these days. No, and, and you know, they had sex on the first date, and then she writes that she never saw him again, which goes back to what your mother used to say. Never have sex on the first date. They go, why buy the cow when exactly, you can get the yeah. milk for free? Yeah. <laughs> but I think that that's changed, though, in this era, where I've talked to a lot of young people that say, you know, if I have sex on the first date, I don't necessarily judge that person if I really like them. Are you finding that I think that attitudes true? have changed. I, think I do, too. And I think women um, feel like if, if men can be in... Uh, you know, can date for that purpose, then, then we can, well, too. Women too. Um, I see that women have a harder time with it still. Yes. Um, and, and that came through in this piece where the guy, I mean, she was questioning this guy's behavior because he kept flattering her he said, You're over beautiful? the top. Yes. Yeah. Could he flatters I stay her over, over the top. It's like this old school courting, you know, yes. like, like you, you're, you do, you're everything to me and blah, blah, blah. And then, and then he ghosts her after. Yes. <laughs> and then he did the, I'll call you later. Yeah. Do you know how many times when we would say, well, what does later mean? Does it mean two hours? <laughs> does it mean tomorrow? Does it mean next week? The other thing that I love about the calm so much are the headlines that you choose. Mm -hmm. Let's see. One is what Shamu taught me about a happy marriage, the bike that saved my life, how 30 blocks became 30 years, and this one. Just for tonight, pretend you don't know yeah, me. Last How weekend. much thought? Yeah, last weekend. How <laughs> much thought goes into the headlines that you choose for the columns? Well, the headlines are so important these days, and, and uh, what's, what drives that a lot is social media. You know, if most most of the people who come to Modern Love come through through social media, and all they get, um, whether it's on Twitter or on Facebook, is a headline, a graphic and a few words underneath that. Mm -hmm. And that's everything that's going to make them click or not. Mm -hmm. But um, it can't be um, clickbait. It has to deliver. Yeah. You know, so it has to be provocative. It has to capture the story. But it can't give too much away. It's got to be honest. So we, um, yeah, we go over and over these headlines. Sometimes they come quickly, and sometimes we, we go, you know, come up with like five or six. You have to work six. on it. Yeah. And the illustrations, too, were also, to me, another important part of it. Number one, there's a very distinct style. Do you always use the same artist? It's been the same artist, Brian Ray, uh, for, what, like the past eight years or something like Brian that? Brian has yeah. a very distinct style um, on this column. And what, what always fascinates me is when I look at the illustration, I wonder how in the world is this going to make sense, A, with the headline and the story, <laughs> and it always delivers. Is a lot of time yeah. also spent on the illustration? Because I think that's key, too, to the success of And that's of interesting home. for me to hear, because I, I don't appro approach any of this fresh. Like, I'm part of the creative process, so when I see the picture, it immediately makes sense to me, because I already know the story. You know what it is, yeah. Um, but uh, he's, he's just a, sort of a brilliant artist, and, and he has this, this uh, palette of colors that are... Um, uh, sort of bright and stand out and, and a childlike style yeah. of, of st almost stick drawing at times. That works. Um, but yeah, he, he's he just got this, he, he comes up with several sketches that mm -hmm. are just uh, pencil on paper mm -hmm. and he sends those. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's six and the art director and I will decide sort of which which works the best and then he'll he'll follow through with color now do people just randomly submit things to you or are you out soliciting for ideas they randomly submit mm -hmm. um, they're about eight thousand a year eight thousand a year in. yeah and how long does it take you to make a decision on I'm gonna choose that one because I'm thinking Some, you're never gonna yeah. run out of material here probably not nope <laughs> nope you're not um, Sometimes within the first read, um, 
but a surprising number I really have to really have to stew over and um, sometimes I need to edit it before I can tell if it works or not uh, and sort of pare away words and shape yeah, and to make things sure that like it works. that yeah when it, is there such a thing as the most popular modern love column because I definitely have one yes what is it it was the called to fall in love with anyone do this Oh yes, and it was about thirty-six questions. Yes. This couple take. Yeah, know. I took those questions. Yes, <laughs> a lot of people for my imaginary <laughs> friend. Yes, <laughs> a lot of people did. Like uh, twenty, yes, thirty million people. Yes, um, that's the most. Popular. Yeah, so that one just went went all over the place. Um, did you and your are you are you married? I'm married. You're married. For I think I'm the only person who didn't do those questions you with didn't? my wife. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been married? Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so you and your wife, you didn't do it? We didn't. I was kind of afraid for some reason. I'm not very brave. What, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? <laughs> the Dennis? truth. Go ahead, speak into the microphone. Um, my favorite one was, you may want to marry my husband. Mm -hmm. I thought this was one of the most touching things I've ever read. Yeah. This was a woman who was dying. Amy was dying. And she was talking about, she talked so loving, lovingly and so... Um, kindly about her husband, the man that he was, the man that he is. And I thought she set it up so beautifully. And I, I was hoping, well, maybe she'll survive. She didn't. She died 10, ten days after. 10 days after it was published. What was yeah. her reaction to that one? That That's still my favorite one. Um, it was a profound reaction. I mean, it just it was a sob fest mm -hmm. uh, around the world. Um, that, that was an interesting story because it, it came in um, to the inbox, and she was in very tough shape already. She was in hospice, mm -hmm. and it sat there for a week unread because I didn't know it was there. Mm -hmm. And then, it, and then her agent sent it through a different editor, and it got to me. And when we worked on we when in, in editing the piece, um, she she was uh, you know she'd have to pause a long time for breath, mm -hmm. and by the time it was. The saddest part about that is, we, and we rushed into the publication, mm -hmm. and even so, she wasn't, her agent told me she wasn't quite a, aware w when it came out. Mm -hmm. um, she, you know, she was really just days from dying at that point, but it was such a gift to her family. Yeah, um, I thought so too. It was so, such a sort of beautiful, and, and her husband didn't know about it. She was doing yeah, this she all. Yeah, she didn't. Did he, do you know if him. he got married again? Do I you know what happened to him? I don't know. No, I don't have an update on him, yeah, no. Don't you think we need an update on that story, Daniel? I think we do. You know, this, it was just March 3rd, 2017, <laughs> yeah, so it's it still very year, fresh. Yeah. But I was very curious. I'd be very curious to see what happened to him and the response that he got after his wife was encouraging women to fall in love with her husband, who she thought was really outstanding. Yeah. So as we, as we celebrate Valentine's 2018, what do you want to tell us about the state of love in this country or the state of love among people in general. Are we taking it seriously? Do we still care about it? Well, yeah, of course we care about it. Do um, we? And I ask I, this because I have yeah. a friend of mine who says, the institution of marriage is dead. You know, people are hooking up. People aren't yeah. really looking for substantial relationships. And I just don't happen to think that that's true. That's why I'm asking you. I think, I think the biggest challenge these days is that, um, you know, you have to make yourself vulnerable to open to be open to another person, to be open to love, to you, you have to be a sucker, you know. And um, Daniel, and sucker's not good. It's it's the, on, it's the only word? way to do it in this case. You do. You think you, <laughs> you have to fall you have to for really it? Expose yeah, yeah. And, but um, you know, te technology and our phones and dating apps and all that—they um, all are, you can use them as kind of a shield, mm -hmm. you know, to keep to keep yourself at a distance from people and to not take risks. Um, you know, with especially with college kids today, it's like the the way to ask someone out is to text like, "What's up?" I know, I hate that. Um, People don't pick up the phone and call. Yeah, and and even picking up the phone and calls, it's more of a risk. You're putting more of yourself out there, mm -hmm. but you can be rejected more to your face in that way. So that I think that's the biggest hurdle. I I find people are as romantic as ever, but less willing to take risks, and so it becomes. Sort of a conundrum, like how do you? <laughs> how do you do it? How do you do if, it? If somebody texts you and says, "What's up?" That's their way of asking you out. Yeah. 
Really? Or, I, or, I or asking for those, sex. Or asking for sex. Yeah. I got one of those texts the other day, and I thought they really wanted to know what's up. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm working on a piece. I'm it working could mean away. that. I don't know. It depends on the context. <laughs> I, I didn't know what's up. He was asking me out on a date. I didn't realize that. <laughs> You've probably been asked out you know, 20 yes. times this week. Yeah, what's up? I'm like, well, let's see. I'm getting ready to fly here. Da, 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 da. I, see, I don't know the, I don't know the cues. Mm. Who is... Who is harder to fall in love, men or women? Well, that's an interesting question because um, men are more likely to say, I love you first. This was they a big are. surprise to me. That's a big surprise um, to me. I think it's 70% seven, of the time men say, I love you first, but they say it before they, you've had sex. They say it before you've but, had but, sex. But like before you've had sex with the person, and then the woman is more likely to say, I love you after sex, and then the man's not as interested. You know what's the worst? <laughs> is if you say, I love you, and you hear crickets. I know. <laughs> you know? Or thanks. Or thanks. thanks. <laughs> yes, or thanks. Or, yeah, that's, or, or yeah. that's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> thanks so, for telling me. So that. men are likely before sex to say, I love you. Yeah. That's interesting. This is a study that done at Penn State University. And women are more likely to say it after. Yeah, and then by then, then the man is asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so you're thinking as we celebrate Valentine's Day that love still really matters. Please say that. I mean, I, I find the younger Only generation, yeah. like, deep. I find them deeply cynical and deeply romantic at the same time. It's huh. sort of a more, more polar extremes. They fantasize. I mean, we've held college essay contests, and what comes up as an influence on love um, in relationships, more than anything else, are Disney movies. Yeah, and they, st but they're aware, like this is not the truth. This is not. This is a fantasy. But they still, there's like this powerful, you know, drive to believe yeah. in that kind of love. I still have the keep hope alive. That's I still have the keep hope alive. Yeah. Thank you so much, Daniel Dones. I love, love, love your work. Love this column. Can't wait to see what happens on <laughs> Sunday. Bye. Thank you, Gail.